Do I have any doubt about the Chiefs beating the Lions? Never a doubt. Give me a break. They're going to be just fine. So no, I'm not worried about it. I am flatly not worried about it. Why does no one understand what's going on with the Chiefs except me? So I'm not worried about the Chiefs at all. Everyone right now, except for me it would seem, is freaking out about the wide receivers. They will be fine. This tattoo is gonna go down as one of the greatest sports prediction tattoos ever. We'll see if I end up being right. Welcome in, What's Right with Nick Wright, episode 216, our annual edition where we discuss the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl. It's a tradition around here. Demonze is dressed for the occasion, and it is a unique spot to be in where simply by believing in Patrick Mahomes, I get to be the rightest man in sports media. The, I, it is, it's, it's as if I, co I covered physics 110 years ago <laughs> and I just kept betting on Einstein and people were like, how do you do it? Well, what's your secret? And it's like, I don't know. Uh, he's the best we've ever seen and he seems pretty good. All right, so welcome in. A lot to do today. There's a winter storm in New York City that has appeared to have some impact on our internet which I know can be spotty and frustrating for people at times. I think we've got it figured out. Uh, if you're watching live on YouTube and there's an issue, I apologize, but we will get the full episode up, and I think we're going to be fine. Uh, Demonze won money on the Super Bowl. Demonze uh, won money on the teaser. The teaser, by the way, either way, the teaser you wanted to do would have hit. The teaser yep. I convinced you to do needed Close. overtime to hit. Right. I almost cost you on that, but the <laughs> Chiefs won. So I want to talk big picture and then about the game, and Demonze will jump in and out with questions and thoughts. The big picture, we just showed it. Uh, Patrick tweeting, never a doubt. So I'm going to talk about me and then the big picture, I guess. Uh, and I know that there are some people wondering, was that coincidental? I don't want to reveal any confidences, but 100% not coincidental. And in fact, you know what? Patrick won't be mad about this. Patrick hit me right after the Ravens game and, and text me, never a doubt. But And then next next one, but still more work to do. And... I, and I'm not ashamed to say this, I will be totally honest, I said to him, I was like, hey man, uh, I think I called him a legend, and then said, if you wanted to tweet out Never a Doubt, it wouldn't exactly be bad for me. <laughs> and then, two hours after winning the Super Bowl, he puts that on Instagram and IG, and texts me, I told you I got you. See yep. you at the parade. And it's about as good as it gets, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. The Kansas City's very small town, even when its athletes are the biggest stars in the world. And right after the greatest athlete in Kansas City history, arguably the greatest athlete in NFL history, and we will see where he goes down in all of sports history, right after what I consider the crowning moment of his career – the fact that he shouted out what we do on the television show and my never wavering support was a very cool moment. So, oh, big picture wise, why did this seem so obvious to me? Not that there's never an obvious Super Bowl champion, right? It's single elimination. These games are close. They're one score games. But why did it seem so obvious to me? that the Chiefs were being written off in a way that was baffling and that they were as viable as any team. And now everyone is catching up to it, but it was three. They had the three biggest pieces you need for any Super Bowl champion in any era of football. They had a legitimately great defense. 
that just became one of only a handful of teams in all of NFL history to never allow 28 points in a game. In fact, that defense only allowed 25 points one time all season, which puts them up with some of the greatest defenses we've ever seen. So that was the first check mark that was being overlooked. They had an unquestioned great coach that was in the argument and now is unquestionably the best active coach in the league and one of the greatest coaches ever. And a quarterback who, while I do not think quarterback wins are a stat, I do think there is such a thing for a quarterback as knowing how to win. The reason I don't like quarterback wins as a stat, it's a, you, you know, weaponized against uh, certain players or used to laud others, is because there are... So often in the NFL, a quarterback does everything he needs to do, leaves the field with the lead, and never sees the ball again, and takes a loss. Or, when we saw throughout some of this regular season, a quarterback could play great as Mahomes did, and his teammates let him down like happened in week one, his offensive teammates. But what I do think is a real thing is recognizing the type of football that is demanded in given situations and rising to that occasion. And what you saw from Patrick Mahomes on this arc of the postseason was week one of the playoffs, wild card round against Miami. What it was going to take was for him as the tip of the spear as the leader of the team, to look totally and completely unfazed by negative 30 degrees. And he did that by opening, and Reed did it by calling three straight passes, by opening the game up saying, we are not changing anything. And that game was won, in my opinion, by the mentality of Patrick versus the mentality of Tua and the Dolphins. From... Mike McDaniel to Tua to Tyreek to everyone, they looked like they didn't want to be there, and the Chiefs looked like, ah, it's a little chilly out here. What it what that game took was that you were going to have to show up and just pretend it wasn't the coldest football game of your life. The next game against Josh Allen and the Bills in Buffalo, What that game was going to take from Patrick was perfection. I am going to have to make the big throws down the field, run the ball. I am going to have to make zero mistakes. And that's exactly what he did. I am not going to have a ton of the super short stuff or the super deep stuff. But because of the injuries to their linebackers, I am going to be able to live in the intermediate part of this field, and that is where he lived. The AFC Championship game in Baltimore, the moment the Chiefs, Patrick needed to come out guns blazing and put the pressure on Baltimore. He did, back-to-back touchdown drives. The moment that happened, and then the Chiefs got up 10, what that game took was punts. Don't turn the ball over. Don't get greedy. As long as every time I have the ball, we're up more than one score, all I need to do is make sure I don't give them a score. And in that game, he did nothing the entire second half until the one possession where it was a one-score game, the final possession, and then he uncorked a perfect 35-yard throw down the middle of the field. That should be noted. When the Chiefs lost to the Eagles and MVS dropped the game-winning touchdown pass and everyone wanted Patrick to kill him, Patrick went to the podium and said something that I think even I was like, oh my gosh, you might be taking this accountability thing too far. If you remember, he said, I could have thrown it a little bit shorter. 
And we all igno- we all were like, give me a break. It hit him in the hands. He was reaching for it. It hit him in the hands. Fast forward two months later. The biggest throw of the season up to that point. Two MVS. Same coverage. What does he do? He doesn't lead him. He throws it a little bit shorter to where the ball almost catches MVS. Where mm-hmm. it, 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 where it, it lands in his chest to where it's almost undroppable. And then the Super Bowl. What was it going to take from Patrick Mahomes? It was going to take... Go ahead, DeMonte. Go. I'm going to take some legs. I know that. Um, exactly right. Yeah, exactly you're right. A lot. Well, and here is the, what will, I think, blow your mind about it. So we're used to seeing Patrick in the playoffs take off and run. And this is where Andy gets credit and Patrick gets credit. So Patrick, the year they won the Super Bowl, he uh, hurt his knee on a QB sneak. And that was 2019. They took out the quarterback sneaks. Then in 2020, in the playoffs against the Browns, they were running an option play. And the league thought Patrick got concussed. He actually got choked and blacked out, but he got choked on the edge and had to be out for the rest of the game, was ruled out. That was the Henny thing as possible game. That was the playoffs in 2020, okay? The Chiefs had not called a single, this is via Bill Barnwell, a single designed quarterback run from that moment until the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl. They went 60 games without saying the design of this play is for Patrick to keep it and run. But when the moment demanded it, when Nicky Bosa is crashing down and crashing down and crashing down, Patrick takes advantage of that on a triple option designed run for 22 yards. And then with the Super Bowl on the line, trailing in overtime, fourth and one, Designed quarterback run. It's what the moment demanded, so it is what Patrick delivered. And and so that is what so we now the numbers on this are now insane, okay? I am I'm I'm just gonna throw a few at you and then we'll get into the actual game. But the numbers are truly unlike anything. Demonze, we've ever seen before, and they seem make believe. So, uh, uh, the and I've got a uh, uh, the great stats uh, producer from uh, from First Things First. Uh, we used him on the show, but he, I, he sent him to me an email because I knew I'd want to use him on the podcast as well. Mm-hmm. Playoff history when trailing by double digits. Okay, playoff history before Tom Brady came around. And this is where great athletes, Demonze, change our brain on what is expected or possible. This is why I've said LeBron playing at this level at 39, Steph is low-key getting the short end of the stick for what he's right. doing at 35. Because LeBron yeah. at 35 led the Lakers to a title. So people are thinking, oh yeah, at 35 you're still in your prime. You're not. You know, you know, Jordan was at the very Curry's end of his prime. Living up to it. <laughs> exactly. Curry <laughs> is. But if LeBron hadn't just done it, people would right. be saying, oh, my God. Okay. Right. So before Tom Brady came around, postseason history, down by 10 or more, teams won 11% of the time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Before Tom Brady took over, NFL history all quarterbacks, all teams, if you're down by 10 in the playoffs, you win 11% of the time. Brady then took over, and in 14 playoff games that he was down by double digits, won six of them. So, and before his final playoff game ever, he had won, it was only 30, he had basically won half. You know, he was six and seven going in his last game ever. So Brady... Changed what we we looked at down ten is, oh you you you're in trouble, but you got a chance. So all right. of NFL history is eleven percent. 
Brady, 6-8, 43%. Patrick Mahomes has been down double digits in the playoffs seven times. He's won five of those games. That's 71%. Okay, let's take it further. In the last decade, I'm sorry, in the last five years, since this Chiefs dynasty started, mm-hmm. there have been 11 double-digit playoff comebacks. Okay? Mahomes has five. The rest of the league has six. In the last five years, there have been 11 double-digit playoff comebacks. Patrick Mahomes is 5-1, and one, down double digits in the playoffs. Every other team in the league is 6-48, and 48, 11%. That same 11%. The Super Bowl, down double digits before Tom Brady came along. A double-digit Super Bowl comeback had been done twice in NFL history. The teams down 10 in the Super Bowl. Other than Mahomes and Brady, 2 and 47. Okay? Brady, 2 and 1. Patrick, now 3 and 1. And I will expand it one step further. Just down, and this is where greats change our brains. Just down a touchdown in the playoffs. Just down seven points. You could be down 7 0 after the opening drive. Before Brady came along, teams down seven in the playoffs won 20% of the time. Brady was 10 and 11, won 48% of the time, two and a half times more often than everybody else Brady did it. Patrick is nine and two in playoff games. He trailed seven, 82% of the time. He so finds you, a way. You, Go ahead. Yeah, so, so you've called him the greatest active living athlete before. So do you think that he's surpassed yeah. Michael Jordan and uh, Tom Brady from the sounds of it? You think well, he's so that's, Tom Brady so I, so I'm, I'm glad you asked that because that's why I – so some people misconstrued that. So that's why I said active. So the, the – What I am so let me explain exactly what I think by that. So it's Jordan and Brady obviously aren't active, uh, but LeBron is, and Mm. you know what I mean. So I'm saying he's better than LeBron. I am so I will give all the Mahomes superlatives now, and then we'll do the game breakdown. So I think Patrick Mahomes, by greatest active living athlete, what I mean is take the best player, current best player in every sport. Mahomes is the best. So I'm right now not comparing him to LeBron. I'm comparing him to Jokic or Giannis. Mahomes is the best. Mahomes is the greatest act. Mahomes is better at football than any other athlete is is at their respective sport right now. Yes, that's how I feel. Absolutely. Unequivocally, yes. Uh, Now, as far as the Brady-Mahomes stuff, this is... All we can do is, if you are a Count the Rings sycophant, then Mahomes obviously has a lot of work to do, okay? If you are just going to say he must get to seven, and by the way, spoiler alert, Demonze, if Mahomes gets to seven, what folks will say is, yeah, but they both have seven. Brady and head he to never head beat, beat Brady. Him. So he, right. right, so he actually needs eight. That's fine. All we can do is look at pace. And Mahomes has six years as a starter, has won the Super Bowl in half of them, been to the Super Bowl in 67% of them, been to the conference title game every single year. Brady in six years as a starter, won the Super Bowl in half of them. I'm, yeah, that's right. Brady won yeah. the Super Bowl in half of them, went to the Super Bowl in uh, half of them, and went to the conference championship game in half of them. So he is... Oh, no, in four of the six. So he's he's ahead of that pace. And Brady, for his career, won the Super Bowl 32% of the time, went to the Super Bowl 45% of the time, went to the conference championship game 65% of the time. So he's ahead of all those paces. Uh, but those are that's a different question. If the question is, I can have any quarterback 
in any era in and I don't in any situation for one drive, one game, one season, who is my pick? Of course it's Patrick Mahomes. And I would challenge anyone who thinks it's differently to tell me the quarterback you're taking what they can do that Mahomes can't. Because the answer is nothing. There is nothing any of these other legends could do that Mahomes can't. Oh, Montana clutch? I, Mahomes is the greatest come-from-behind quarterback ever. Oh, b- do a game manager. Don't just take care of the football situation. Mahomes just set the record for longest consecutive playoff games without throwing a pick. Oh, do it with amazing weapons, the 07 Patriots style. Okay, no problem. Mahomes' first year in the league threw 50 touchdowns and 5,000 yards. All right, do it without a bunch of weapons. Last year, without a number one receiver, set the all-time NFL record for yards in a season passing and rushing combined. All right, do it with a great defense. They traded away Tyree Kill. They're 7-0 in the playoffs this year leaning on their defense. No, So is Mahomes a game manager? Yes. Is Mahomes a, a high-flying trick shot artist? Yes. Is Mahomes a front runner? Sure. Is Mahomes the best come from behind guy? You betcha. Whatever type of player you need for that game, he will be. That is who the quarterback of the Kansas City Chiefs is. And there, there are, so there was an interesting moment in the Super Bowl when Rice got upset. Rasheed Rice thought he was going to score the walk-off touchdown. So, two things there. One is, Rice didn't realize that there was a bad snap and that Mahomes had to look down. So, Mahomes looked down so he, he, you know, didn't see Rice breaking open. I am of the belief, Demonze, that even if he saw him open, he was not throwing it to him. That's that's why I liked Rasheed Rice getting on his ass about it. Like I I do think okay, that go even ahead. though he's even though he's a rookie, I feel like you know it's crazy for him to come at Mahomes like that. But he was wide open, and I noticed that after he barked at Mahomes, Mahomes got the ball to him when he was open, and they ended up winning the game. So here's the thing, I I don't have any problem with Rasheed Rice. Didn't Rasheed Rice, by the way, has handled himself beautifully and it's okay right. for some fiery stuff on the sidelines held Andy Travis Kelsey damn near did an elder abuse on Andy Reid and that yeah. is and remind me Demonze to talk about that but I want to talk about the Rasheed Rice thing right now okay if you so Rice was spectacular this year love him mm-hmm. and he's such a great kid and he seems so like pinch me I can't believe I'm on this team I really right. love the player so um and I don't mind him being fiery his only yeah. issue was, believe it or not, he actually led the Chiefs in drops. Okay? So, if you think about some of the worst Chiefs moments this year, they, were the wor- they weren't the MVS dropping the pass against the Eagles. They were Kadarius Toney dropping a pass on a route just like Rice was running where it hits him in the hands, and he pops it up in the air, and it gets picked off. So 10 seconds left in the Super Bowl at the 10-yard line, down three points. Because of Butker, who's a legendary postseason performer, you have overtime locked. And with the new rules, you're guaranteed a possession, right? I do not think Patrick Mahomes was throwing the ball there when they had overtime in their back pocket to anyone other than Travis on the edge because that was the only pass he could make that was a 0% interception pass. Right. As, as, and so Rice running across the field open but with a safety coming down, I think that – do you understand what I'm saying here? I, I get is, what you're saying. You, the, I think that – and now maybe that's not the right play. I'm not, the, but in my in my mind, what is happening there is Patrick is saying, and maybe, and again, maybe it's maybe I'm overanalyzing it. Maybe it is as simple as the snap was low, so we never saw him. But I think it was. I am not going to risk that we lose the game the ball on was some a, fluky was a safe nonsense. Spot. 
at the end of the day. The I think safest if spot happen, imaginable. Be- it was right. It was either going to be a great play by Travis or we're going to overtime. Just a dead ball. What right. it was not going to be is this rookie who is awesome but has had a fumbling issue and a drops issue. I'm going to throw it over the middle yards away from the end zone with seconds left Tipped in the up. Super Bowl. And so I just so I and I think Rasheed probably I don't know if Rasheed was thinking that or not, but Rasheed probably you know probably like you can trust me, buddy. You know right. what I mean? I'm there. Seems like what um, he was thinking. <laughs> yes, and uh, <laughs> but also Creed Humphrey, who I think is the best center in football, had snap issues all playoffs. Yeah. All playoffs, they were all low, and it throws off timing. Mahomes dealt with it. Mahomes dealt with a in overtime. MVS took a six yard gain and went back. Oh, oh my god! Oh my Yeah, mean, no, that was, that was really annoying. But I mean, I mean it, that it, was, it didn't seem like he. Tr- I kind of seemed like he got thrown that way, though. Like so he kind of got thrown, deal. and then it's a weird rule. So you get your forward progress unless right. you then try Take to go extra forward steps. again. So right. it so it when he was thrown, if he'd have just gone down, he'd have gotten the six yards. But the right. moment you regather and then try to go, it starts anew. So yeah. he regathered and then was like, Oh man, I lost four yards. Let me let me go back further. Right. That was almost a real disaster. You know, and so and that's and they got out of the that. Super Bowl. They right. got out of it. All right. I want to talk about the biggest moments of the game because sometimes we go too macro uh, and don't get into the micro. So I'm just going to go drive by drive, and I apologize if this is a little laborious, and Demonze, you jump in whenever you want. Drive by drive, let's go. Not play by play, but drive by drive. All right, opening drive of the game, I didn't like how things were going because there were the Niners – Got, they went first and 10, second and four, first and 10, first and 10, first and 10. And I'm like, well, not even forcing many second downs, much less third downs. This is not good. Now, I wasn't panicked because the Chiefs have been such a better second half defense than first half defense, but I didn't love it. And then the McCaffrey fumble happens and I'm, I am over the moon because I'm, I, I know the math on if you don't win the turnover battle, you don't beat the Chiefs. The Chiefs, the the only games they lost this year, they lost the turnover battle, except for the first game of the year, they tied the turnover battle, but the turnover was a pick six, which counts in my brain as two turnovers. So I'm like, okay, this is a blown opportunity. And then the Chiefs' first drive goes three and out, They have, and it's like, all right, you know what I mean? We're fine. Three and out is what it is. And then the Chiefs defense settles a bit. Really what happens, the Niners get a couple brutal penalties. And they, they that drive stalls. And now we're just kind of trading punts. And then the Niners have the first significant moment of the game when right at the end of the at the after the end of the first quarter. They get in Chiefs territory. They have a third and 14. And I thought, Demonze, they were going to go short over the middle or run McCaffrey, make it an easier field goal for Jake Moody. The Niners instead take a deep shot to Debo, and that was the play that Trent McDuffie had perfect coverage. Perfect. Was one-on-one with Debo. He jumps in the end zone, bats it away, Two. and now it's third, it's fourth and 14, and I'm thinking, we are cooking with gas here. This Moody guy is going to miss the kick, and yeah. we got, like, and, and Moody, who to the Niners' credit, they got rid of Robbie Gold, who was as money as any kicker in the league inside of 40 because he didn't have a big enough leg. And they, they go with this rookie from Michigan who has a monster leg but had been erratic this year, and he has the longest uh, field goal at that time in NFL history. Okay? So uh, that is, is – is, so now it's 3 nothing. All right. Next drive. 
the Chiefs once again, if the first play doesn't do much. It, it, uh, the drive is kind of going spotty. Rasheed Rice fumbles. Keep that in mind. He fumbled in this game. Now, Tony Romo oddly was like, was that intentional, Jim? No, it was, I promise you, he was not intentionally lateraling forward while being tackled. Um, <laughs> but the, the Chiefs recover it. And that's when Mahomes uncorks the bomb to McColl. And McColl, who has had trouble tracking balls all year, the safety for the Niners lost the ball in the lights or something. McColl tracks it down. And that was when we then got the, the Pacheco fumble by fumble. Pacheco. Yeah. So, and that's when we then also saw uh, Travis get into it with Andy. So let me give a little context there. First of all, this is why sports and everything life is so these little tiny moments, man. If Andy falls over, I not only do the Chiefs probably lose, but like it is now Travis Kelsey's entire life is different. If when he bumps Andy, if Andy falls, I think Travis maybe is just done for the day. The, the, the Chiefs, you know what I mean? Like, there's these little moments. Go ahead, right. Monze. I mean, I just kind of notice, I, I kind of look at look at people's body language and stuff. When Andy Reid started to slip over, I noticed that Travis Kelsey's fist was still bald. I noticed that he didn't, like, I've, I've kind of felt that he noticed that he was falling over, and he was just continuing to scream at him. I don't really like well, that he I, didn't kind of put the hand out and, you know, didn't, like, grab him the, or something. But, well, I think, hey, yeah, work out. I think that if, I mean... They, those two guys clearly deeply They've got a good relationship. Exactly. And But same with Travis. If you remember a couple years ago, Travis and Biennemi got into it on the sideline. Travis two-arm shoved him. But for some reason with your position, Coach, it's like not considered as big of a deal. And then later that game, he and Biennemi hugged. Travis, you know, Travis punched a teammate in practice. Yeah, he's in a little Trey hothead, though. He, no, he gets, <laughs> he right. gets really high-strung. It's competitive. Um, so, and it's not, again, it's a bad look, and Travis was embarrassed by it. Andy, you know, Andy's Andy, and just, you know, he totally let him off the hook. Totally right. let him off the hook. It looked um, like he just kept his eyes forward, to be honest. Yeah, and was like, what it are you doing? Like yeah, he, he was like, I'm right. not even going to. And, by the way, Jarek McKinnon came over and grabbed Travis, veteran leader, yeah. been on the team for a long time, was on IR, made some big plays in this game. Uh but I think, so I'm not excusing what Trav did, but I think the context is fascinating. So do you remember, Demonze, I think we talked about it on this show. If not, I'll remind the audience. What Travis said about the McColl Hardman fumble against the Ravens when McColl was going for the goal line. I'm sorry, against the Bills. When McColl was going for the goal line, remember, against the Bills, he fumbles it uh, out the back of the no, end yeah, zone. No, yeah, I remember, but... Instead of, what did he, what did so he say? So Travis said, I keep apologizing to McColl, and I'm going to do it all week. That was my fault. My guy, who I was blocking, forced that fumble. And he's like, and I told McColl that's my fault. And that is, so I'll explain why I'm saying this in a moment. But that's A, being a great teammate and taking full accountability in all of it. But it's also Travis saying, McColl was going to score. I let off my block early. That right. guy then came across the field, forced the fumble. On the Pacheco fumble, Travis had been taken out of the game. Noah Gray came in. Noah Gray's guy got off the block and forced the fumble. And I think Travis was beside himself because Gray had made the exact mistake he had made. And Travis knew he wouldn't make that mistake in the red zone again, same circumstance, because he had just made it. You understand what I'm saying there? So like that, that him was, going go at ahead. Andy Reid about that was just, it wasn't because of a missed look. It was because he just wasn't on the field. Because he at was that, mad he was play? not in the game. Yes. Right. 
he was mad that he was off the field because they have the huge pass to Hardman. Travis right. on the pass, you know, thinks it's coming to him, puts his hands up, and then sees it's going to Hardman, and then is coming down. And he got subbed out because a lot of times you take guys out a after a 50-yard pass right. to get a breather. And he was saying, I'm fine. Like, leave me in the game. And it was not. That w now, listen, I, I am not 100% on this, but I am very confident. It was not. Give me the ball. I'm going to score. It was leave me in the game because, and he wasn't, I don't think he was mad at Gray, but Gray had made the mistake that he had already made and right. that he had, you know, and so that that's the context to why that was such a, to use a silly word, a triggering moment for Travis. He right. had made this mistake. The Chiefs had fumbled in the red zone. It almost cost him the Bills game. Then he gets taken off the field. His backup makes the mistake. They fumble in the red zone. Is it going to cost him the Super Bowl? Like, so that so that's the context there. So then after that, the Chiefs force, you know, a quick three and out punt. The Chiefs then once again can't get anything going, and they punt. And all of a sudden, the Niners drive down the field, and this is where I start to get a little nervous. Yep. The Sneed personal foul. So now, in the last 25 minutes of game action, DeMonze, we've had a fumble in the red zone, Travis losing his shit on the sideline, and Sneed, personal foul. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, we look like the damn Ravens did two weeks ago. Yeah. We're playing it's all best the guys. same notes. Our best guys, they're making mistakes, they're losing their composure, and right after that, the old double pass touchdown. And now it's 10 nothing. And well, honestly, like, and I'm not trying to take anything away, but the, yeah. the Chiefs, their meltdown seemed to be a little bit worse than the Ravens because it was internal. Like, they were coming at each other. The Ravens, I don't remember them really coming at each other's heads like that, but the Chiefs seemed to be folding within. Um, but, yeah. no, I mean, they obviously got it together. Uh, the so, so all right so now it's ten nothing, and you have the biggest drive of the game for Kansas City up to that point. You need to get points before the half so you can go into the half down, uh, just down one score, and right. a sneaky, massive play was the Chiefs have a third and four after the two minute warning. And McCall Hardman false starts. And now it's third and nine at your own 40. You don't pick this up. The Niners are getting the ball with a minute 50, all their timeouts, and you're at least down 10 at halftime, if not more. And that was the play that Mahomes scrambles to his right, is looking around, and finds Justin Watson over the middle of the field. That also, by the way, on that play... Fred Warner got called for a defensive holding that got declined because they caught it. And I'm so glad the Chiefs caught it because I did not want to hear, oh, bailed out third and long, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so Watson caught it. The very next play, Mahomes goes back to Watson. He drops it. Um, but they still move the ball down the field. And Shanahan, this was his first mistake of the game, doesn't use his timeouts. Once again, conservative before the end of the half, just wants to take the lead. He can use get timeouts to then maybe go get a field goal of his own. He doesn't use them. This has been a problem of his throughout his coaching career. And the Chiefs end up with a first and 10 at the 14 and third and five at the nine, 30 seconds left, Mahomes takes a sack. And all of a sudden, going to the halftime 10-3. And in that moment, I was like, you know what? That half couldn't have gone any worse. Going to get the ball after halftime, go down and score, and all the pressure will be on the Niners. Little did I know, after halftime, the Chiefs were going to have two of their worst offensive drives of the year. We'll do the second half of the game and answer some of, the more, some of your guys' questions next. Take a quick break. Come back. What's right?
Welcome back in. What's right with Nick Wright? All right, Demonze, before I get to the second half, kind of blow by blow, if there are some questions or follow-ups or things that you want to ask that the producers were thinking about, uh, about where I was, you know, kind of all of it throughout, and then we'll get into the second half play by play. We can do that. Okay. Um, yeah. So who, who's the craziest person that you heard of or heard from during or after the game? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I mean, the, I mean, the coolest was Mahomes. That I mean, the hearing from him after the game, and I don't know of if course. you can hear me or not, Demons. No, I can. Okay, good, you can. Um, I spent, I got, I don't know, I got two hundred texts. I bet. Uh, right after the game, and I then responded to them one by one yesterday. Uh, I'm scrolling through it now. I mean, I heard from, I heard from someone I haven't talked to in like three years. Um, you know, who was the angriest at the Niners and Shanahan, uh, your uncle Somebody. Pee Wee, he was, he's <laughs> heated, man. He's heated. He's heated. Uh, uh, Hopefully he's not I mean, too he, heated. The, yeah. And so he, he was upset. Uh, I, the, and, but no, the answer is, I mean, I heard from friends and family everyone was congratulating me as if i won the super bowl which was very nice like i can't imagine yeah. what it's like for the people that actually do win the super bowl but all right all right go ahead uh, what else so uh what are what are your plans for the parade oh wait uh so yeah no that's great so we are we are going to uh do first things first from kansas city we're not gonna you know we don't have the rights to broadcast the parade or the stage or any of that stuff. So we're going to do something similar to what we did last year where we're just like amongst the people and right. doing it from there. But that, so we fly out uh, right <laughs> after uh, today's show. All right. Go ahead. Who did you watch with and how was the vibe? Uh, it was me, your mom, your little sister, and uh, Coach Mangini. I could have sworn and he wasn't there. No, me and Jeannie was there. Um, and he said that I kept hitting him. I didn't even know it. I just kept, like, slapping his shoulder. I right. Uh, but I was, I mean, the vibe was anxious. I Like, I had never a doubt about the Chiefs over the totality of the season. But once games start, you get anxious. You know what I mean? Like, and there were touch-and-go moments, as we'll talk about in the second half uh, breakdown. Uh, Super close and so, for comfort. Yeah, absolutely. Now, at one point, like mid-second quarter, your sister, your baby sister was like, oh my gosh, I'm the VIP tomorrow, so we have to, Daddy, can you print out these pictures for me? Like, oh yeah, no, I cannot. Like, I, you're out, <laughs> you, you've lost your mind. Like, you, you've truly lost your mind. All right, let's get back. Now let's do the second half uh, because it started disastrously. Um, yeah. I, You come out of the half down seven. It's like, all right, go get points. First play of the drive. Uh, Pacheco doesn't handle the toss. And all of a sudden, we're in second and 22. Just a total disaster. And worst start possible. Third, second down, you get some of the yards back. And then Mahomes, with his one real mistake, the interception. And that's when I was like, oh, my God. I thought it was going to be tied, and instead it's Niners ball damn near in field goal range. And that's where I think Kyle made some mistakes. The next three Niners drives, he threw. they called seven passes and two runs. And I understand the Chiefs were in, uh, you know, fronts where you think you want to pass. What the Chiefs were worried about was McCaffrey. And you played into their hands of letting Purdy, who was fine. Like, I don't want to spend a lot of today. I, Purdy was fine. And I thought he made some very nice plays early in the game and a couple nice plays late. Uh, he didn't. He only had one ball that I thought should have been picked, the first pass of overtime. Uh, and we'll get into that later. Like, I, Purdy was not the reason they lost. And he was not good enough, you know what I mean, to be the reason they won. Did he ever Go scramble ahead. at any point during the game? I'm trying to think. He did once, and they called the horse collar, even though I thought Bolton let go. 
Uh, right. They called the horse collar, but yeah, he didn't scramble much. Uh, he also his his yardage prop Demonze was twelve and a half, and he was at thirteen, and then took that knee at the end of uh, was it regulation? Yeah, took the knee at the end of regulation and yeah. went under. And so, but all right, but, so they th- go ahead. No, it's it's something small. It might actually annoy you, so continue. Sorry. Okay, thanks. Uh, and so <laughs> I thought the Niner, the Niners had the ball three times with a chance to take a two-score lead and went yeah. three and out every single time. And that was when they felt like they had left the door cracked open just enough. And then the Chiefs finally get a good drive or a decent drive. The, there, was, there wasn't really... A, a singular gr- a huge play except for the Mahomes designed run when he ran for 22 yards and mm-hmm. then all of a sudden Butker is lining up for a 57 yarder to break the record Moody had just set he hits it and now it's 10-6 and you're like okay we might be in business the Niners then again go three and out and I'm like all right the Chiefs are gonna have the lead and the Chiefs have a third and two, and Mahomes gets rushed, doesn't hit Richie James, and they're punting. And that was when the muffed punt happened. And it wasn't even a muffed punt. It went off a guy's leg, and it's just unlucky. And the Chiefs, you know, the Chiefs had a lot of fumble luck in this game. Seven balls were fumbled by the two teams. The Chiefs recovered six of them. That's, you know, that's lucky. And the, oh, the great awareness the, by the Chiefs to get has on the drive Has the drive passed where Mahomes threw the pass? He's like falling. I kind of want to ask you if you thought that that was yeah, calculated because I thought that was almost a huge mistake as well. Where he uh, He's falling over. He go throws ahead. the ball, and it just landed perfectly in between two 49ers. But it was just like In the super, middle of the field? Yes. And it was like almost kind of so like a what, deep pass. So I what was I was worried about passed. there was, yeah, I think it was, what I was worried about there was um, that they might call grounding. That it, because it, now you usually don't call grounding in the middle of the field, but I didn't see a good view on whether or not there was anyone around, but they just right. kept it moving. Yeah, uh, yeah, that could have been a, that could have been a big this mistake. Scary. But then, so, so the, the muff punt hits the up man's leg, the Chiefs recover it. First play, touchdown, MVS, and all of a sudden the Chiefs have the lead. And this is where I will give Purdy credit. You are trailing end of the third quarter, headed into the fourth in the Super Bowl, and he made some big plays. Third and five, hits Jawan Jennings, uh, and then for 17 yards. Fourth and three, Shanahan at the 15, goes for it which was shocking to me, but the right call. Purdy hits George Kittle, where George Kittle got all four of his yards for the game. But keep telling me how he's the best tight end in football. 37 yards per game in the playoffs. Get out of here. Um, And then second and nine, Purdy finds Jawan Jennings again, and all of a sudden the Niners have the lead. That was, I mean, that's a down in the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl, and Purdy came through. So credit to him there. Didn't make any big mistakes. It wasn't like one screen pass popped off. And now we get to the Mahomes brilliance. Okay? Down three in the Super Bowl, 11 minutes left. First down. Hits Kelsey for 16. Next first down. Uh, Pacheco, nothing. Second down. Incomplete to Rice. Third and 10. At your own 41, down three in the Super Bowl, 10 minutes left. Travis Kelsey for 13 yards. First and 10. This is the play you're talking about, DeMonze. Uh, Bad snap. He's getting hit. Throws it deep down the middle to no one, and they don't call grounding. Uh, I don't know if it was grounding or not, but that was touch and go. Second down and 10. Justin Watson for 25 yards, perfectly placed down the sideline. Now we're cooking. First and 10 at the 21. Pacheco with his best run of the day, nine yards. 
Second and one from the 12. Pacheco with his second best run of the day. Eight yards. And then this was where I, I really couldn't believe they didn't get a touchdown. First and goal from the four. Pacheco up the middle for one yard. Second down, Mahomes incomplete. Third down, Mahomes gets sacked. And they're kicking a field goal. And now it's tied with five and a half left. And this, Demonze, is when I freaked out. Because... Yeah. They were running that I clock, was like, too. Well, right. Five, under six, the Chiefs had burned a timeout, and I'm doing the math, and I'm like, it's on the board. We don't touch the ball again. It's on the board that the Niners just get six yards, six yards, four yards, eight yards, slowly, methodically move the ball down the field. defense is tired as hell. I, yep. And first down... Purdy hits Jennings for 23, and oddly, Demonze, I didn't hate it. Oh, and by the way, I left out, obviously, a massive, massive moment, which was after the Purdy touchdown, the blocked extra point, which changed yeah. the math on a lot of things. Now, if the Chiefs were down 17-13 instead of 16-13, when they had that fourth and goal from the four, they would have, or from the six, they would have gone for it, of for course, so right. everything changes, but still, huge moment. All right. When Jennings gets the 23 yards on their first play, I'm not that devastated. I don't love it, but I'm not that devastated because I'm like, okay, if they're going to score, go score fast. Get big right. chunks. But then Debo gets nine yards. And I, it's so funny. I was so, I was confusing Deanna so much because, uh, you like, I hurry saw up, him get go, nine go, yards. go. Well, I was like, I wanted him to get 10. I wanted right. it to be first down. And she's like, wait, she's like, why did you want? I was like, I can't explain it to you right now. Just trust me. Um, And second and one, uh, the Niners use a timeout. And then they run McCaffrey for three. And they're at the fringe of field goal range. And now I'm worried. First and 10, three and a half left. They run McCaffrey for five. And now I'm terrified. I'm like, well, it's second and five. The Chiefs have two timeouts and the two-minute warning. If they keep running, we're not going to see the ball again. And then, in my opinion, Kyle Shanahan made, and this is how Super Bowls come down to, people all talk about the 28-3. to three. The 28-3 to three and Shanahan blew it and Brady and all that. It's two plays. Two plays for Kyle in that Falcons game. Up eight after the amazing Julio Jones catch on the sideline. If he just calls two runs in places he called two passes, they're kicking a field goal and they win the Super Bowl. Called a pass, they had a hold, they took a sack, and all of a sudden they're punting. Second and five, 245 left. If you're the Niners, if you run five more plays... Uh, there's six more plays, five or six. The Chiefs are never touching the ball again. And he throws, and it goes incomplete. And now we keep a timeout, and now it's third and five. It's the two-minute warning. And I think your mom has this on video. I am kneeling in front of the TV saying, tip a pass, tip a pass, tip a pass. Now... As a Chiefs fan, I wanted them to throw. Again, if we're going to parse with Kyle, thir second and five, I think, is a must run. Third and five, you can make the argument. The right play there is, after the two-minute warning, to run McCaffrey. He can pick up five yards. If he does, you can run the clock down to 20 seconds and kick your field goal. If he doesn't, you have a really interesting call. Tied at fourth and two with a chance to pick up a first down and run the clock down to zero and kick the field goal. You know, like, but instead, they call a pass. And I am yelling, tip a pass, tip a pass, tip a pass. And Trent McDuffie, who had maybe the best game of his career, comes unblocked on a blitz, drawn up by Spagnolo, and... 
We got him in the Tyreek Hill trade with our first round pick, traded then in front of Buffalo to snag him. He leaps and tips the pass. And now it's fourth down, and now the game is back in Patrick Mahomes' hands, and I was never nervous again. They Moody, shout out to him, makes the field goal, but now it's Patrick Mahomes with two timeouts, a field goal ties it, a touchdown wins it. And what does Patrick Mahomes do? Finds Travis for nine yards. Scrambles on his own for three. Finds Noah Gray for 12 yards. Finds Justin Watson for eight yards. Throws incomplete to Watson. That was on the play. um, That was a weird one where uh, Romo was yelling, spike the ball, spike the ball. But... Uh, Jarek McKinnon or Isaiah Pacheco was not was not behind the he line of scrimmage yet. Line yet. He yeah. was way and so and then even afterwards he was like he could have saved thirty seconds like nobody. Right. He, they had to wait for him to get back. But regardless, is um, there a certain for, isn't he, there a certain formation that you have to be in in order to spike the ball? You don't know. Well, well, yeah. I mean, there's don't? a spike formation, but the but everyone's got to be behind the line either way. At the very um, least, no, of course. You, at the very Copy. least, uh, and then and then he goes to McKinnon for seven yards on third and two, sneaky massive play, the play to McKinnon, third and two. You have you have man to man coverage deep down the field. This is where Mahomes is matured and just the best quarterback I've ever seen. Third and two, Demonze. Down three. 45 seconds left. Okay? You have a chance to have the greatest moment in NFL history. A 40-yard game-winning touchdown pass. And you know what he does? Talks to McKinnon before the snap. Tells him to go out to the right at the snap. Dumps it off to McKinnon. Move the sticks. Chiefs timeout. Uh, First and ten. Mahomes scrambles. That was, I think, his only mistake for the record of the uh entire uh of the entire last two drives. The scramble was bad because the clock now runs. Now second and seven, Demonze he goes incomplete. Now you've got 20 seconds left. You're at the 33. So if you don't pick this up, it is asking Butker, who's amazing. But to make another 50-yarder, another 50-yarder, just to tie the Super Bowl. And that was where Travis Kelsey took the ball on a crossing route and not only went 22 yards, not only lowered the shoulder and knocked out the Niners defender, but Travis Kelsey, Demonze, and this is why sports are great. Because the legends show you why they're legends. Travis Kelsey to Monze on that play ran faster than he has run on any play in any game in seven years. That's a fact. Next gen stats. That is a legendary player channeling something that he has not had access to in almost a decade. I am going. To, because he knew he had to get to the sideline, so we right. uh, a, and he knew the circumstances. The Chiefs still had a timeout, but you want to get to the sideline so you can save the timeout. Right, get to the sideline, get upfield, and he went. The thirty-four-year-old Travis Kelsey ran faster than Travis Kelsey has in any game since he was twenty-seven. And then the very next play is the Rasheed Rice is open. He throws to Kelsey, and now we're kicking a field goal. And then we go to overtime, and overtime, I got to tell you, I'm glad. I'm glad it went this way. But for all the folks who have been whining all damn year, the Chiefs get all the calls, the Chiefs get all the calls, there was not a single pass interference, defensive holding, or illegal contact penalty called, accepted the entire game. And then it's third and 13 in a broken pocket with Brock Purdy getting sacked, maybe fumbling, and they call defensive holding. And they get a new set of downs. It was going to be a three-and-out punt Chiefs ball go win the Super Bowl. But you know what? So be it. 
No Before problem. Before you go into that, I, yes. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. How would you have played the overtime decision had you been the Niners and won the toss? Oh, I think they – listen, I understand what Kyle was saying about we. if it goes – if there's a third possession, that's sudden death. I get the logic. I don't think that applies to Mah- playing Mahomes. I think they made a mistake. I think that if you're playing Mahomes, giving him an extra down – to where and giving him the knowledge, what they call the second what he mover needs advantage, to what right. he needs to do. I was thrilled they picked what they picked. So I thought that was a mistake. I don't think it yeah. was the biggest mistake Kyle made. I understood the logic of it. What I did think was mortifying for the Niners is that none of their players knew the rules knew the, that right. they said after the game. They like, can you imagine, Demonte? What if the Niners had scored a touchdown on their opening drive? Would right. guys have ripped their helmets off, laid on the field, been celebrating? Right. Right? You yeah, check that, thought. That's really it was sudden crazy. Death. That, Meanwhile, like, they the Chiefs go were like, up there we had and a they PowerPoint don't... about it. We had all that we knew everything. Um, <laughs> but okay. So they pick it up. Purdy makes a really good play on third and two to move the sticks. They don't face another third down until the final offensive play of the game. They had a sneaky it was a blatant but a really bad holding penalty uh by their right tackle you could i mean it was no question about it, it was a hold that put him in second and 12 but they picked it up anyway to use check on that pass that i wasn't sure was a catch or not when use check like oh, lost the ball when he hit the sideline but out. whatever Des Bryant um, said it wasn't yeah so and then third and 4 Demonze Legendary players, you know, do legendary things. And Chris Jones, I understand he was unblocked, but Chris Jones did to Purdy what he did to Josh Allen two rounds before. Someone's wide open behind my head for a potential game-winning touchdown. I'm going to make you not be able to see him. Right. With Josh Allen, he bumped him. With Purdy, he rushed him. And now this was, in my opinion, a mistake by Shanahan. Fourth and four, I think you got to go for that. You have to. Because here's why. If you don't get it, the Chiefs are not in four down mode. If you don't get it, the Chiefs, you know what I mean? They can't go for a fourth down if you now only need a field goal. You know, And so right. I thought he made a mistake there. He kicked the field goal. And in that moment, I said, we're going to win the Super Bowl. And what did the, listen, the, the, the Chiefs get stuffed on a third and one. They call timeout. Mahomes runs. And they, just think about that. Fourth and one, down, in overtime. You don't pick it up, you lose. You pick it up, people are talking about you as the greatest player they've ever seen. He picks it up. And then after that, you have the MVS play, which should have been second and four instead of second and 13. No problem. He goes right back to MVS. And this is, again, the advantage of knowing you have four downs. On second and 13, they weren't trying to pick up 10 yards. They were like, we still have three downs. They picked up six to MVS, third and six. They run mesh to Rasheed Rice. That was the play where Kelsey had the great block after Rice caught the ball, and now we're cooking. Now all of a sudden we're in Niners territory. Mahomes to Pacheco for four yards. Mahomes to Pacheco for five yards. Third and one. I thought, Demonte, I thought he was going to run for the game-winning touchdown. Third and one. Mahomes up the middle for 19 yards. I thought was he was awesome. going to get the game-winning that touchdown. Was a great play to see. First and 10. Pacheco for three yards, a sneaky, massive moment of the game. Kelsey gets that inside screen. There's people everywhere. Yeah, they were, there was, they got him at the line of scrimmage, basically, and he powered through. And he willed his way, not only for the extra yards, but this is so important to the first, for a first down. If he's two yards short, it's now third and two at the five. What do you do if you don't pick it up? Do you go for the fourth down? Do you just force another over? What do you do? He picks it up, and then as Tony Romo is explaining to us about 20 minutes too late that this clock actually is totally totally irrelevant and doesn't right. matter at all, McCall Hardman's into the end zone untouched, and the Chiefs win the Super Bowl. And it took every, think- every bit of every one of those guys. Go ahead. 
like Shanahan has to like have it in his head that they're probably going to run that play given they're in the same spot that they were in when they ran it to Kadarius Tony and uh, Sky Moore last year. I feel like that's the one play you've got to be like, and I get like granted they might have got him with the motion that McColl yeah ran. the motion they were so afraid that McColl was going to take the jet sweep that right. I mean that's why that play is so deadly is because we do so much jet sweep stuff. But this is right. why the Chiefs are special. They have scored four. They have four second half Super Bowl receiving touchdowns, Demonze, in the last two years. Those four have gone to Sky Moore, who's going to have to fight to be on the roster. Kadarius Tony, who's going to have to fight to stay in the league. MVS, who everyone was done with. And McCole Hardman, who the New York Jets said we can't use him. Those are the four guys who have scored t- receiving touchdowns from Patrick Mahomes in the last two Super Bowls. And that's how you become a dynasty. Uh, quick break, right back, what's right? All right, welcome back in, what's right with Nick Wright. All right, I just told the producers I was going to do something and then I changed my mind. We're going to do our Never a Doubt recap in a week. We have some great tweets from you guys, and we're going to do that. We have them in the rundown, but I don't have time to get to them right now because I have to go do Colin, got to do the show, and then I got to get on a plane. I want to do a speed round, I'll do it, of these questions. John Sackett said, I want that hoodie. Uh, one of your mom's friends sent this to me. Uh, your mom's friend, I, I, I don't want to say the wrong friend, but someone from Kansas City sent it to me. Uh, all f- when I find the link to where you can get this Kansas City versus everybody hoodie and jacket, I'll tweet it out. Uh, David Snyder says controversy with o- overtime decision by Kyle. Let's say he kicked Mahomes scored a touchdown. Would you have liked them to go for two? Uh, Chris Jones said they were. Chris Jones said that their plan all week was if it goes to overtime, we want the ball second, and if we need a touchdown, if we score a touchdown. Uh, We're going for two. Now, I don't know if they would have or not, but he said that's what the plan was. So that was kind of the flaw in Kyle's thought process was you're not guaranteed that there's going to be a third possession. Again, I I understood the logic of wanting the ball first, but I I thought it was the wrong decision. Uh, Gabe Felter said, Nick, do you think the Chiefs will go after a no-name wide receiver in free agency uh, or they try to draft another young player and save cap space? Here's the thing about winning this year and last year, DeMonze. Now there is, if you are a veteran player that still has stuff left in the tank and you're like, do I want the biggest contract possible or do I want the best chance to win a ring? There is now no argument where you go if a ring is your chosen. It's not like, ah, right. Buffalo could be good, Baltimore, San, it's it's Kansas City. So that that is where winning breeds winning. Uh, they listen, they've used back to back second round picks on receivers. Rashid's awesome. Sky hasn't worked out. Oh, Brian Dugan. Oh, I love him. He's one of my best friends from childhood. Uh, Brian, tell your Sean, I tell your Sean, tell your brother Sean, I say hello. Uh, he says, never a doubt, maybe a little panic for me. I'll never make that mistake again. David Glassstetter says, do you think confrontation between Kelsey and Coach Reed tarnished the victory a bit, knowing be blown up by those outside Chiefs kingdom? The only, listen, Sarah Palin blew it up. The people that hate Travis Kelsey because they hate what they perceive his politics to be, we're going to, are going to use it against him. Nobody that matters will. It doesn't, it does not matter. Um, also, the fact that he ended up playing great. He had eight catches on nine targets after that was spectacular, and Coach Reed didn't mind. Um, Cole, Cole Cordova said, do you think it's time to make a move at quarterback for the Niners? No, I mean, you got Brock for one more year at a million bucks. And so you, I think you try to ask Brock to do a little more and see what he, because you, you have a major question answer on Brock a year from now, whether or not you want to pay him. Uh, right. Ryan Fitzgerald said, what did you think about the decision to kick with six left in regulation instead of one more shot at the end zone? I was fine with it. I know they had a timeout. And I understand that, uh, you know, it was borderline. But here's why I was fine with it. Oddly. Because of the bad snaps. And I love Creed. And Creed is, you know what I mean, a legend. But you six seconds 
what if it's a really bad snap? And either you lose 10 yards or it bounces around and clock time runs out. So I was fine with it. Eight seconds, I'd have gone for another shot. Six seconds, no. Uh, Itachi said, are we going to keep Jones? I hope so. Uh, and so we'll see. Um, has Nick paid DeMonte his teaser payout yet? No, but I will today. Uh, how long does the excitement last Ooh. for life? Um, where do you go eat <laughs> when you live in Kansas City? A, a lot of places. Um, all right. Wanted to answer all your questions. Keep sending your never doubt tweets from the parade, and we'll show them on Tuesday's show along with all the rest of these. Demonze, did you have something you wanted to say? Looked like you want, were going to jump in right there. Uh, no, no, I was actually going to jump in and say what you said, but no, super fun show. Let's go, Chiefs Kingdom. Great job. Let's go, Chiefs Kingdom. Dynasty official. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, see you guys at the parade in Kansas City. See you on First Things First at 3 o'clock. See you on Colin in about 90 minutes. What's right? Hey, it's Nick Wright. Thank you so much for watching. Please do us a favor. Click subscribe. It helps my ego. And demonze has got a financial bonus writing on a number of YouTube subscribers. So help him out. And also, click the bell. I don't know what the bell does, but they tell me to tell you to click the bell. And if you're audio listeners, people that have commutes, drives, whatever it is, subscribe to the podcast as well, wherever you get the podcast. Same show, just, you know, just in your ears instead of through your eyes. All that. Check it out. Appreciate y'all.